hello beautiful squad welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is gladys and if you have enjoyed the squad kindly consider subscribing so that you don't miss out any content i upload on this video and guess what guys in the house today we have one of the most amazing writers and i'm so honored to be meeting him today uh, I've, i was so overwhelmed searching him on google finding out that he's one of the best writers i've seen some of his books that i haven't read some yet and i'm hoping to, la uh, to read some in the house he's going to introduce his name where he is from and what he does let's welcome Paul Scott Berry here. I'm in Uganda. Do you like it over here? <laughs> Uganda, no value, no dollar. If you want to know more about him, kindly go to his YouTube channel. What's the name of the YouTube channel? Uh, you can find me Dr. Paul Scott Berry on YouTube and you will have a lot of learning to do but I like to follow the dollar so I talk more about money. Okay and you can also google him. Did you know that googling him on the uh, Google Dr. Sky Bear. Berry Hall. Uh, today I want to know more about you. Who are you? I am Paul. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I'm, 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 uh, I'm a doctor of philosophy. I, uh, from the background of business and philosophy, and I, I write more about philosophy, money, change, values, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So those are what I do. I hear from Liberia and West Africa. So guys, if you want to know what we are here doing, uh, what we are going to be doing today, I want to know about his biography, about his writing, history as an author. Doctor, what's the difference between a writer and an author? A writer is somebody who writes anything. Mm -hmm. An author is somebody who writes a document that becomes a book and published. And, and we say book. you are an accomplished author. So anybody can become a writer? Anybody can become a writer. Anybody. What inspired you to do what you're doing best? I mean, writing and authoring. My background. I came from a very poor background. I came from a very terrible background. And uh, after growing up in hardship, I knew that uh, it was time to do something different because you can't keep doing the same thing and getting different results. You have to do something new to get new results. So the greater the challenges, the better the result later on. So I thought about writing to give back to my African brothers, which I have done. A couple of books are out there on Amazon, Google, oh. and what have you. And I think it's good to give back. So people can purchase some of those books on Amazon and they can receive them, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You buy on Amazon, you receive those books, and some of them we give away free based on your, I mean, contribution towards society because it's all about the foundation that I, I mean, organize. Faith Foundation uh, Liberia, where we give back through educational need for the underprivileged. Okay. When they go to Amazon, what do they search for? Dr. Skyberry or? Once you put Dr. Paul Skyberry in Amazon list or Google list, everything pop up. So guys, go to Amazon, check out his books, purchase some, read about them. You learn a lot and you discover what you didn't know. When did you realize that you can write? When I was very poor and struggling and I needed money, mm -hmm. so I thought that, look, if I do something different, I'll get something better. Mm -hmm. So I started to add values because the value is the one that brings the money. The money does not come. Yeah. I see people running after money, people chasing things without, no, the value is the one that brings the money. Mm -hmm. And how does the value come? The value comes by those that look with the eyes, those that see the invisible will be able to achieve the impossible. So if you are not seeing the invisible, don't think about the impossible. So those are things that I started to think about and I started to do, and then things work out. So I just started writing through the eyes of vision. That's what you need to have. What was your first book? My first book was, in, was titled, The Benefits of Falls and Failures. Mm -hmm. Strategic thinking to overcome falls and failures, using your mind's ability to transform your life. That's what I wrote first because I was in hell. 
I never had money, I never had anything. I couldn't even afford food. So was that book your breakthrough after writing it and you're looking at coming out from what was the, the struggle? Did you have a breakthrough or your first struggle that then I and after the first book, I had a struggle again because the thing about books is not what the content that you write so much is who knows you and how many people you are able to convince that you got something better. So after the first book, you try to market it, you go ahead and try to do what is right and then say things does not work out, then you'll be like, do I give up? No. no. You gotta keep going forward. So giving up is not your thing. No, it's not. No, it shouldn't be your thing. It shouldn't be anybody's thing. And if you're watching this channel, don't give up. Don't give up. For how long have you been writing? I've been writing for close to 20 years. Wow, how many books do you have? I got like 25 books right now. Tell them with your books. Well, I wrote uh, the book title, The Benefits of Falls and Failures. Of course, that was my first book. And then I wrote another book title, Resisting Against the Fail System. That book teaches how to gravitate above limitation by thinking differently. How can you be the game changer? And then when that book started doing some good stuff, I went again and wrote another one titled Strategic Thinking for Management and Leadership Success. Because many times you think you are a good manager, but then when you find out you are only micromanaging people. And when you are micromanaging people, you are not getting the best out of them. Yeah, you have to exactly. manage people and let them do it out of their own will and let them work towards yielding fruit. Then I came up with another one again, running away to the unexpected. When I went and struggled in North Africa, I couldn't make it. I struggled in the Middle East, I couldn't make it. I struggled in the US, I went all around. So I was telling my story about migrants, how African migrants think by going out of Africa is all. Yeah. So I started to tell that story in the book title, Running Away to the Unexpected. Mm -hmm. You run away seeking greener patches, but is greener patches really green? No. It's not it's always, green. It's not always green. <laughs> so when you hear the story about people from Dubai, people in other places, other African women yeah. and young men, then I said, I should write about this. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote that. Then I came back again, I wrote another one titled, Stop Managing Your Mistakes. Stop, yeah, stop managing Many people mistakes. think uh, when they try to manage the mistake, they're gonna get the best out of it. That's not the way it works. Mm -hmm. Now, what is management? Management is the process of, of, of managing things to get the best food of it. Are you going to manage your mistake to get the best? No. You learn from your mistake and move forward. And, and then, then yeah. from me. And then lately I've learned not to even make mistakes because I don't want to manage it. So, <laughs> because so you avoid that I avoid making mistakes. So it's just a lot that uh, we need to talk about. Then I wrote another one titled Manage Your Dream Business. Some of you are entrepreneurs but you don't know you have yeah. it in you. You have the idea, you don't know how to use the then idea. How to start. And you don't know where to start from. So the principles of manage your dream business is just a principle lay out for you different philosophies in there that's going to lead you straight Doctor, to making a business. Ask, what are some of the mistakes people usually do? One of the mistakes in life people, and business. Yeah, one of the mistakes people usually do is to do nothing. No. Yeah, they just sit there and think things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Most African people, we sit in the churches, we pray, we sit in the mosques and pray and just fast and say things are going to happen. Miracles. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> you gotta work hard, you gotta pray hard, you gotta study hard. There's, there's a lot of things that go together. So if you don't wanna be left out of this world, because the world is moving so fast. Yeah, so fast. So if you sit there and, and say, nobody. nobody, you sit there and say things are gonna happen. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. So the first mistake I see people making is sitting and waiting. So people should move out of their comfortable zone, go That's out the only them. place. Success is never in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Success is always out of your comfort zone. Success is doing the unusual mm -hmm. to, uh, to achieve the usual. Doctor, of all these books you have told us, the 25 books, which one was your favorite book? Like, when you sit down, I really like that book. My favorite book is my first book. Oh. Because it taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. It taught me in writing, it taught me in the process of life, it taught me so many things. Remember now, the benefits of faults and failures. People ask me, how did you come up with that title? Does faults have benefits? Yes! Does failures have benefits? Yes! Like? So, if you fall, you learn from that fall, you move on. It should teach you a lesson. Some people, when if you fail, they just be like, this is not going to work out, I should give up on it. No, you don't give up on it. If that idea don't work out, there is always a better idea waiting for you somewhere. And it's within you, you just got to bring it out. Mm -hmm. 
you got to bring it out. You cannot give birth to what you don't have in you. First, you, you have to get pregnant with that vision, and then you have to bring it out. So these are things that we do. And if you don't know how falling down is, how can you enjoy the benefit of getting up? That's why they are saying the money that you earn via hardships and other struggles, you know how to handle it with time. Because you had failures, you manage them, and now you can grab everything at once. That's what Now, isn't. doctor, in these books, I, I believe there is that hard moment you experienced while you were writing a certain book. Which one gave you the hardest time? The hardest time of my writing is learning from mosquitoes. Learning from mosquitoes? Yes. <laughs> okay. Normally, learning from mosquitoes is the best thing that I can tell any African or any writer to do. Rich Writing is for rich people. They have their nice homes, they have their air conditioning, they have everything, they sit, they lay back, and they write. That was my mentality. But then at night, when I couldn't sleep because of mosquitoes in the slum with me, then I needed to find something to do. After thinking and thinking and thinking and frustrated, I don't know what to do, then I said, maybe I should try writing. Mm -hmm. And then as I write, I enjoy the music from the mosquito. <laughs> and then I always, I, I, I kept going in it, Maybe. you know. I kept, you, meet them you have to do that. And then I kept loving it and then it was so nice. But believe me, I've learned a lot from mosquitoes. <laughs> and I was able to interpret most of what I was thinking, most mm. of the vision that came mm. into my writings. And those are my most powerful moments. Wow. Nice. Doctor, I've, um, I've gone through the peaks and all the videos you have had, con you have a lot of people you have connected with. What's your connection with them from different countries? Tell me about it. Well, first thing, I have been to 123 countries in the world, teaching, writing, motivating people. 100 what? 123 nations in the world. Oh. That is almost all of Europe, most places in the United States. You talk about uh, Middle East and then most places in Africa. And some of the things I do when I go, I sponsor kids, mm -hmm. make sure they get their school fees, mm -hmm. make sure their needs are taken care of. And um, I got a couple of friends that support me back from the US. And what we wanna do is to see children who are going through difficulties being inspired through our story. And we give back to them because education is the key to success. success. So we want to make sure we are not leaving anybody back as we are growing. Mm -hmm. So we are growing successfully, then we need to look back. But I'll tell you this, mm -hmm. the, the community that brings you up is the one that brings you down. So if you grew up in a certain society, mm -hmm. you got successful and you forget about your people, you are just buying your easy way to come down. Mm -hmm. You need to look up for your people. So that's how I came back to Africa and I started doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm sorry to ask this. Are you doing this, helping out with kids and with school fees and everything regarding about your background or it's naturally you, you have a giving heart? No, first thing, the giving heart have to be there but because of my background. I don't want to see any other child that come across me and goes sleep hunger. Mm -hmm. I used to sleep on hunger. I don't want to see any other child that comes across me being kicked out of school because of school fees, because of books and stuff. Yeah. I went through that. I know what it is when it's time to write an exam and then they say you have to get out because yeah. you don't have fees. Yeah. I walk out crying many days. I don't want it to happen to other kids. And that's the reason why I do what I do. What's the best thing of being a writer? The best thing of being a writer is to tell your own story. I always told people if you are writing your story, don't let anybody hold the pen. You should hold your own pen, you should direct your own path, you should tell your own story. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you why I always like to talk more about African stories. Mm -hmm. I've been on a lot of flights coming to Africa from the US to Uganda to Ethiopia to Sudan, mm -hmm. going back to Canada, different places. And I'm always seeing some of my uh, American friends, brothers and sisters coming to Africa, going back and saying, hey, you know, I'm there, I was writing a book about Uganda. Mm -hmm. I was writing a book about Liberia. I was writing a book about Tanzania. What do you know about Tanzania? Just to come and do one visit, you think you know it all? Mm -hmm. 
or just to visit uh, Uganda and go chase the gorilla and you think you know it all, <laughs> you need to live the story of Africa to yeah. be able to tell the story. So that's the reason why I like to write our story, mm -hmm. because we know what we went through. Yeah. We know what we are going through and we know what we need for transformation, because the information you put in the book is the one that brings the transformation for the people. Mm -hmm. So that's what we always need to do. We need to write the story mm -hmm. in a way that it transforms our people and at the end we benefit from our story. Yeah. Because there are other people that come write stories that don't even resemble us, tell things about us that don't even look like us, mm -hmm. and make money out of it, and we benefit nothing. Yeah. What are some of your hobbies? Ooh, gym. I go to the gym every day. I stream every day. I play music every day. I like to dance. I like to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like to be happy. Mm -hmm. I thought reading is going to be the number one. No, reading is not my hobby. I get frustrated <laughs> when I write and write and write. And sometimes I don't want to see books because mm -hmm. when you start to write, mm -hmm. listen to this if you're a new writer, yeah. you get a lot of headache. If you don't get headache, then you are not started writing yet. Oh. If you start to write, you get lost. Sometimes you are in this world, but you zip into another continent or another planet. Even a place you have never been before, mm -hmm. but you just sip out and you are out there. So when I get lost, that's when I write. When I'm in my comfort zone, I don't really write. And I hate books when I'm not writing. <laughs> I like to laugh, I like to play, I like to lift weight, I like the gym. Mm. <laughs> I see you're looking good and yeah. you have a cute smile, doctor. Doctor, what you say when you're telling writers that you get a lot of headache, this brings me to a question. Is it writer's breakdown? Writers really break down sometimes. And sometimes you write for three months and then you delete everything from the computer and then you start at fresh because you get lost in your own writing sometimes. In your own story? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I always used to be curious about the writer's breakdown. Good enough, I have him in the house. Now I'm going to know more about that. This breakdown, you drill really completely lose that story like just because it's not related to you or just because you don't know what to write next um you don't lose the story the story that is the, the a story is always a story mostly when the story is connected to you you mm -hmm. don't lose the story the only thing that happens is you get frustrated mm -hmm. why is it not getting finished mm -hmm. why can't this book get on the market mm -hmm. when is it ever going to get on the market then between that, you get some other frustrations, shortcomings, family issue, friends issue, work overload. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be like, you know what? I'm done with this book. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you throw it somewhere. And then after three years down the line, you go and look at it and dust it and be like, ooh, I have a better idea for this. Mm -hmm. And then you rewrite it. Yeah. But don't give up. Just keep writing and keep adding the stories together. Mm -hmm. Because it gets difficult when you're trying to write what you don't know about. But when you are writing your own story, or when you are writing something that you have made research about and you want to tell it out there, it's so sweet. It just flow out like somebody's drinking water. Doctor, thank you so much for all this information. I believe upcoming um, writers who are starting the journey, you have learned something. Don't give up, being persistent. And go check on his YouTube channel. I expect him to be um, teaching you more about how to start writing and all that, right, Doctor? Yes, ma'am. Let's talk about man and Most of us here in Africa, we do have one thing that we believe in. Just because we come from a poor background, we think we can't make it in life. Do you know that? Yes, many people have that belief. That's why I've always told people, mm -hmm. now listen to this, mm -hmm. listen to this. Come I always told people, do not let hardship to define you. Mm -hmm. Let hardship to refine you. Because when hardship, when difficult times refine you, you can refine others. Now, let's talk about value. Mm -hmm. No value, no money. Mm -hmm. Many people chase the money instead of chasing the values. Mm -hmm. First, you have to get value. When you have values, then you get attraction. And when you are attracted, then you get influential. Mm -hmm. And when you are influential, then the vision is the one that brings money. It's not the, the, the act of chasing money. Yeah. Because if you don't know what to chase in life, you are going to chase money and you will never get money. And you never First, you it. must have a vision. Mm -hmm. And that vision should create values for you. Mm -hmm. And then when you have values, then you should be able to look at and identify a problem. Because when you can solve a problem, that's where the money comes from. If, for instance, you want to do hair, you want to fix women hair, young ladies out there, mm -hmm. identify your value first. 
make people to get to know, learn what you want to do, and then put more values into making the hair, and then market yourself, then the money will come. But don't put the money before all of that. You won't and get the money. By the way, that's a big problem here that they usually, we usually do first. We look at the money and forgetting about the quality of something, meaning you're putting value aside. Mm -hmm. Because once you do something good for someone, that person is going to come back and oh, we could make someone else. Money will come? Yeah, but we look at first money. First look at the vision, then the value that you add, then the learning process, and then the deliverability of that vision into problem solving mechanism, that's where you're gonna get the money. Doctor, remind them about your, uh, your YouTube channel name and the Amazon name they should use to get your books. One good thing I like is that once you put Dr. Paul Skyberry on any social network, you're going to pull me out. You will see this handsome You're going to pull me out. You're going to bring a lot of things about me. Mm -hmm. And you will see YouTube channel will drop. You're going to see most of the videos of children that I help in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. You're going to see the school, the give back, Facebook, anything, anything. Once you put the name Paul Skyberry, that's it. You're going to see me, and I, I'm happy to be in Uganda. Believe me, we will get some what? Matoke? Yes. She said we're going to get some Matoke. Hey, you can come and join us. <laughs> have, you, you, have you ever tested Matoke? I've tried my toke, yes. I've tried my toke. Believe me, it's good, and I see why Uganda people like it. But honestly, I prefer rice. You prefer <laughs> rice. Thank you so much for watching until this point. If you haven't had this or you just joined us, kindly go to his YouTube channel, Dr. Otha Sky. Is it Dr. Paul Pastor? Sky? Oh, yeah. Otha. We alter animal, anything. Okay, Dr. Sky Paul Berry, you find him there, kindly subscribe, show him some love, tell him you're from Gladys Lane, and don't forget to share his videos, guys. If you're book lovers, you want to read some of his amazing books, visit him on Amazon. If you don't have that app, you can download it. Just type Dr. Sky Berry Paul, you have all his books. Any last words for that? Oh, us. I love Uganda and I love East Africa and I know you people are wonderful people. You are so welcoming. This is the pair of Africa and mm -hmm. you can find me in Kigali on Saturday. I'm going to Rwanda and if you are out there in Kigali, I'll be visiting you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Until we meet again on our next vlog. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao.